My name is Randy Osborne. I work for Louisiana State University in the Center for Geoinformatics. I run the real-time network. I'm the network manager for uh, everything that goes with the real-time positioning. Our network is uh, 120 stations and it's in the Gulf Coast in Louisiana primarily and then everywhere from Texas right at the border of Mexico to Florida on the east coast of Florida in uh, Bernardino Beach and we do real-time positioning in Louisiana and then we also do height monitorization along the Gulf Coast where we collate, co-locate tide gauges and GPS stations to uh, try to get a relationship between the datums. Well, we have different uh, types of products that we offer to users and they come in three classes. The uh, GIS users uh, mapping grade and then we have the agricultural, the farmers, they use it for machine control to guide their tractors one inch pass to pass and then we have surveyors that are into serious uh, real-time positioning, trying to get very high accuracies in real time. And that could be anybody from the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, surveyors, engineering firms, uh, tractor companies that run construction. Uh, you name it, we have uh, the who's who of clientele. We don't have ground control that's uh, based on my imitation, it's traditional. Benchmarks in Louisiana are no longer valid. They haven't been valid for 10 years. So we've been on active control for 10 years. So it's really either you use our raw data and post-process it, or you use our real-time data and you just survey as you go in real time. So our customers rely on us to be able to do what they do legally. And in order to conform with Louisiana state law, they have to be using the data that comes from C4G. So I'll explain a little bit about C4G. It's a research division of Louisiana State University. It's uh, funded by the research that we do um, through grants primarily. And then we have the real-time product, which is a separate system that we use to sell subscriptions to. Um, the research component is very expensive. Um, and a lot of times you can't get grant money. So the neat thing about our network is that when times are tough and there's no money available to do stuff, the real-time network can actually fund the research. And so we're self-sustaining. We don't have to ask for money if we, we don't need it, but then when we do special projects, like one of the ones we just got uh, recently is a five-year grant for $3.1 million, and it was to do research to improve the geoid in South Louisiana, which currently has about eight centimeters of ambiguity in plus and minus. So you got a 16 centimeter swing in variability depending on where you're at. And so that's a big problem since the NGS and their National Spatial Reference System wants to have a one centimeter geoid all across the nation. We're an outlier in that process. And so how do you fix that problem is the question. And we're the research center that's doing the work to help improve the models by putting new data, by doing terrestrial gravity studies, doing uh, leveling, trying to make relationships between the active control antennas so our core stations, which we've been using as control, don't have a relationship to the ground. And so we're trying to establish that relationship by putting in eccentric benchmarks and then driving a relationship between the benchmark and the antenna in order to, so a survey can occupy the ground mark and have a, a known relationship to the antenna so they can use that in their reporting. I found out about the alloy receiver through an email about a webinar and I decided I needed to attend this webinar to find out what was going on with this new receiver. And during the webinar, I was seeing all the cool features that I was always wanting in the uh, receiver. And so I said, I need these receivers, but I don't know how I'm gonna get my money. So I, I started digging around and we found some funding to be able to purchase 40 receivers. But the thing that, that really wowed me about the alloy receiver is that it had spectrum analyzer, which I'd been wanting for a long time and it had uh, something that I was really happy about, which is the firmware was included for life. So uh, that was one of my major, uh, it rubbed me the wrong way because I come from an industry where firmware was always free, so I never was happy with having to pay for firmware, and then when I found out it was included, I was like, when? <laughs> well, we currently have uh, 40 alloy receivers, and of the 40, we've deployed about 20. We're deploying them at all of National Geodetic, our National Geodetic Survey's course 
program. So we have 31 in Louisiana, and of the 31, we've replaced approximately 20. We're going to replace the remaining uh, receivers, and we'll have a 100% uh, NGS cores alley network. The cores network that we have is uh, GolfNet, and it's the actual cores infrastructure we call GolfNet. Um, not every cores that we have is part of our real-time network. The real-time network we call C4G Net. We have um, all NetR 9s currently, but we came from the NetR 8s, and then prior to that, the NetR 5s, and prior to that, the NetR S. And I have all those receivers sitting in the shelf. It's like a huge collection that I want to redeploy for some other type of uh, application that's not as critical as a real-time network. But uh, they're still good units, but we can't use them to keep up with what's happening now for our clientele. My first impression? Wow, this is amazing. The thing was like a tank and it was beautiful and it had chrome. I'm thinking, I'm a car guy, so this is really cool. It looked like a custom hot rod in my eyes, but uh, then I started playing with it and I found that the buttons were better, the lights were behind the buttons, which wasn't something they had before. And then the one thing that I thought was really cool is the screen was so big and I could see a lot more information on it. That was a changer, a game changer for me. Plus when you laid it down flat and you stood over it, you could see the display. And so it opens up a lot of possibilities to be able to use it easily in the field because you can see the display from just about anywhere you mount it. Something I'd like to congratulate you guys on from the Alley is the ability to power up devices from the Alley receiver. That's a game changer. Now I can connect a modem to the Alley receiver and I can look at the voltage that's going out through the UI and so I can track its battery because it's using the Alloy's battery. And if I want to reboot the modem, I reboot the Alloy, it reboots the modem and everything comes up together. So it's a real system now as opposed to a piecemeal type solution. And so that's the one that really knocked my socks off and I'm, I'm excited about deploying as many of those as I can. Wherever we have autonomous core stations that use solar panels and the power is autonomous, the uh, communications is autonomous, that will be how I deploy those. But um, it's a very cool feature, thank you for that.